Hey, Larkin Rose here, and it's time to make some people mad at me again. Dr. Seuss's first children's book was called And to Think That I Saw It on Mulberry Street. I think I got that title right. It's about a boy who sees, I believe it's like a horse and cart going down Main Street, or Mulberry Street. Duh. It's right in the title. And on his way home, he thinks, well, if I say it was more fabulous and there were this and that and the other thing is his story gets more and more elaborate and extravagant in his head. If I tell this, everybody will think it's so impressive and be amazed. And then he gets home and I think it's his dad. So what did you, what did you see? And he goes, I saw a horse and cart. So he decided not to embellish <laughs> the story. So there's a lesson there, and the lesson is worse than ever, or more important than ever, now that we have something called the internet. People like to get attention. Saying boring things, even if they're true, doesn't get you attention. Saying exciting things, even if they're false, gets you attention. Now, you've probably noticed a whole lot of that, even from bots that do these ads that, that misquote people and just make stuff up all over the place, it's just the modern equivalent of the, the tabloids. Did you know that Elvis was really an alien and he's still alive and he's blah, blah, blah. We're going to make up this outlandish story because people are going to go, oh, really? Because if they don't know, but it sounds fascinating and it sounds interesting, they want to find out more. Or they want to hear the claim, even if they're not even being at all rational or scientific about trying to figure out whether there's any truth in it. Now, it isn't just the psychology. I mean, every five and six year old knows, hey, if you exaggerate what you saw, you get more attention. And people go, oh, really? And they listen. If you say something, I saw something that was sort of boring that everybody's seen. People go, okay, whatever. If you say, oh, I saw this and this, and kids quickly learn, a lot of them, to exaggerate and kind of make shit up and embellish it because they get attention. Well, the same thing applies to grown-ups, too, because they're still people with people psychology. And so if you kind of exaggerate your story of what happened, uh, sometimes it didn't mean by lying about the facts, it's just by sort of embellishing it and leading up and making it sound huge um, to get attention. Well, now you can add to that already existing psychological phenomenon the concept of advertising. Because on the internet, a lot of people make their money by advertising, uh, advertisers running ads on their videos. And that depends entirely on how many people watch their videos and so how many people see the ads. It relies absolutely none at all on whether the video is saying anything true or anything worthwhile or anything that isn't completely bonkers. As long as you can get lots of views and you can show to advertisers, zillions of people watch my video. I completely make shit up or do outlandish, idiotic crap but lots of people see it. So if you want your ad to be in front of lots of people, pay me this many dollars and I'll put your ad in front of a bunch of people who watch my videos, even if I'm utterly full of crap. So now there isn't just the psychological incentive, there's a financial incentive for people to be outlandish and make crap up. And this absolutely applies to the freedom movement only there's an even worse added factor involved, which is the most outlandish guesses of conspiracies are going to get attention because people are going to go, have you heard that blah, blah, blah. Now, I'm going to bring up a case. Here's what's going to make some people mad of the hurricane that went up and, and clobbered, went through Florida. Not the one that's on its way into Florida. And by the way, good luck to the people I know there and the people I don't know there. The one that came up and, and trashed the western half of, of North Carolina, which is unusual. It's not unique. That has happened before. But it's unusual. Usually hurricanes follow the coast or they, they die out of or whatever. 
So when that happens, if somebody says, oh, yeah, well, the conditions were right for that to happen, it's unfortunate. They just got a ton of rainfall dropped at that particular moment, and you're between mountains, so it's all draining into the this river at just the wrong time, and so you just have massive flooding, and that sucks. And, you know, there's bad things happening, and, uh, you know, good luck to anybody still in there, and thank you to all the people helping out, whether they're donating from a distance, or the people actually flying in and out, or the mule teams going in, and, you know, I've, I've seen bits and pieces of the stories about that. But somebody who just reports, well, here's what we know, and here's what we don't know. Some people probably died. I'm sure some did. We don't know the numbers. If somebody reports that, people go, oh, that's sad. Maybe I wonder if I can help out or chip in somewhere. Who can you donate to? But if somebody says, there are bodies everywhere, people will pay attention to that story, even if it's a total stinking lie. Now, I don't know what happened in North Carolina. I don't know how many people died. There was obviously devastation. There's lots of pictures of the devastation in lots of towns. So I'm not saying, oh, nothing really happened. I don't know what happened. And here's the problem. I don't know what happened because I trust 0% of the people posting about it. Because the people who post the most alarmist, scary, horrible, dreadful reports are getting more attention and getting more advertising and getting more people to spread it around. <gasps> Did you see what this person said about this horrible thing going on? Which means they have an incentive to just throw the truth out the window, whatever it might be, and maybe they don't even know what the truth is, and maybe they don't care what the truth is. Whatever is most sensational, which is more people dying equals more sensational. More devastation and mayhem equals more sensational. So the people trying to get attention by way of giving the most dreadful version of events in every way are going to give a lot of people an impression that has absolutely nothing to do with the facts. Because a lot of people doing that, they don't even know the facts. They might accidentally be saying some true things, but a lot of them don't know the stinking facts. And here's the problem. When people do that, they make it harder to find the truth. And a whole lot of the freedom movement does nothing except make it harder to find the truth of things going on. Now, I'm going to throw this out there. Because, of course, 80 zillion people said, they made this storm. They made the storm happen. Government made the storm happen. Did you know they have a patent for weather control? Have you read it? Until you've read it, maybe shut up. If you don't know how that stuff works, if you don't even have the theory of what may or may not be possible, if all you did was hear somebody else say they made this happen, shut up until you actually have a reason to think that's true or a reason to think it's false or whatever. But people have lost the skill of shutting the hell up. And it it seems to me, now maybe it was just the lack of internet, when I was young, the people who didn't know anything about anything at least knew enough to shut up about things they don't know anything about. Most people don't know that anymore. Most people in the freedom movement don't know that anymore. So when I say, see people say, well, they have a patent on weather control. Have you read it? I have. I read that thing and go, yeah, this isn't about making a hurricane happen. This is about trying to maybe either make it die out faster or change its direction based on an attempt at something that in their description, ah, maybe it worked. Now, let me be clear, because people love to mischaracterize what I say. Not for a zillionth of a second do I imagine, oh, they're not evil enough to do that sort of thing. They're absolutely evil enough to do that sort of thing. The question is, are they competent enough? Do they actually have those abilities? Now, if somebody says they've been trying to get those abilities, uh, it would surprise me if they didn't. Do they have those abilities? I don't know, and most of you don't stinking know either. But a lot of you are eager to say, they made this storm happen. And if I ask you, because I do this sometimes, how? You know how many gazillion gallons of water that thing dropped on the mountains of, of western North Carolina? How did that get there? How did that water get there? Was it a pre-existing hurricane that they redirected and steered by way of something that didn't show up? Like, 
what do you think they actually did? So far, every single person I ask that of goes, oh, well, I don't know, but they have a pat and immediately demonstrates they have no idea what the hell they're talking about. But they are perfectly happy to repeat something drastic and sensational. Here's the problem. There are tons of actual conspiracies that nasty, evil people actually do. And one of the things that does the best job of covering those up is people throwing out just piles of conspiracies based on wild conjecture and guesses, because then the average viewer is like, oh, I heard, like, take 9-11. Oh, I heard there weren't really any planes. Oh, I heard it was an energy weapon. Oh, I heard there were planes, but it was this. I heard it was this. They hear 50 million different versions of assertions of what happened. Most people don't bother to look into any of them, and they just think, I, I don't know. Now, I am nowhere near being an expert on what actually happened on 9-11. I think the least likely option is the one the government pretends happened. <laughs> Whatever really happened, that statistically speaking is the least likely of all of the things I've heard people make up. But I know firsthand about a subject that I was an expert on. I'm still an expert on it. I don't talk about it, and this is why I don't talk about it. The tax honesty movement is why. It is the reason that most people don't know the truth about the actual legal application of the federal income tax since it was instituted in 1913, or brought back in 1913. I have the entire history of all the statutes and regulations, what they did, how they gave one impression while having the law specifically say it. You know why I don't talk about it? Because most of the people who hear that are either going to say, oh, that's one of those silly tax protester theories because they've heard a bunch of bullshit from other people, or they're going to believe the other bullshit theories and go, oh yeah, because it's really voluntary, or the 16th Amendment wasn't ratified, or the blah, blah, blah. And I haven't, I barely talk about it anymore because almost nobody is going to objectively look into it to examine the evidence and go, well, that claims bullshit. That's what I did, and it took a long time, and I don't expect other people to do that. I finally took the time. Oh, somebody says this, the tax is voluntary. Okay, let's look into it. No, it isn't. That's just some rhetoric the IRS puts in their idiotic publications. It's just Orwellian bullshit. It's voluntary for you to pay, but we'll just, like, rob you and beat you up if you don't. It's not what voluntary means, you jackass. And it doesn't say that in the law anywhere. It just says it in their dumb legally worthless rhetoric. So I looked at that and went, yeah, no it isn't. And then somebody said, the 16th Amendment wasn't ratified. Look into that. It didn't matter. The 16th Amendment didn't change anything. It's still an indirect tax. It's not subject to apportionment because it's not a direct tax. It's an indirect tax. That's what the Supreme Court said. And I know all the cases. So well, that argument's bullshit. And then I came on an argument. I'm not even going to get into it here. If somebody wants, I'll send them a PDF of the whole book, of my whole adventure about it, where I was like, ah, here's another claim that sounds stupid, but I'll look into it. And it wasn't stupid. And I found more and more evidence that shows, oh, holy crap, this person's actually right. The law really does say that. The amount of bullshit I had to wade to to even get to the, the thing that actually had some substance was massive. And it was 100% a result of the tax honesty movement. The bullshit in the way was people claiming to know the secrets about the income tax, and 95% of them were absolutely full of shit. And so I thought, no, you know, who's going to bother digging through this to even find the truth? So I don't even talk about it anymore because that much noise in the way from people who pretend to be against the IRS is going to make almost nobody take the put in the time and effort to find out, which is fine. I just, you know, whatever. It's their, their technicalities and crap matter way less than the philosophical concept that, yeah, taxation is theft. It's immoral. Nobody has a moral obligation to go along with it at all, no matter what their stupid scribbles say. But bringing this back to the present, when there are conspiracies, only they're buried under piles of just random assertions that conflict with each other, it just makes it into a big pile of noise. And I have to throw out... Um, 
some praise to, to James Corbett. Um, soon he'll be coming out with a collection of essays. I happen to have an inside peek at them. And as he has so many times before, he strikes me as the perfect example of what a reporter should actually be and should actually do. He doesn't just say, here's my conclusion. Okay, why would I care what your conclusion is? He says, here's my conclusion, and here's every single step of the way I took to get there, and a site for the source of every single step, just piles of sources that you can look up and go, oh yeah, that guy really did have that office, and in this year was elected to this office, and then he pushed this bill, like, he paves the whole road all the way there for you, so if you give a crap about evidence and logic, you can reach the conclusions he did with about a gazillionth of the effort because he went and found it all and points you to it so you don't have to dig it up from scratch. Almost nobody does that. By the way, I don't do that. I'm not, I don't pretend to be an investigative reporter who does that sort of thing. Um, so, like, James Corp is way better at it than me. But almost nobody in the freedom movement bothers to do that. Instead, I see a huge number of people repeating claims they heard from somebody else, but they can't justify those claims. They can't back them up. They can't explain them. So, for example, the thing about the flood. If somebody says, yeah, they totally made this one, or they totally made the, the Milton who's coming into Florida now, or is it supposed to make landfall in like a day and a half or something, that was totally engineered. Okay, how do you know that? Well, because... Did you know they have a patent? Yeah, I've read their patent. It wouldn't at all make it so they could make this happen. So do you have anything else? Well, this guy said they're doing, okay, that guy saying something, that's an assertion. That's you repeating an assertion. That, that's not evidence. Now, you not having evidence doesn't mean it didn't happen. You not having evidence doesn't mean it did happen. What it does mean is your opinion is absolutely stinking worthless if you have no idea how it would have even happened. And just as with the rest of the population, the opinion of most people on most subjects is absolutely stinking worthless because they don't bother to find out what's actually true because that takes a lot of time and effort. They would rather grab attention by being sensational and repeating some claim without bothering to check if it's real or not. And they don't get that not only does that just make noise all over the place, it literally gets in the way of the truth coming out. Like there are plenty of actual conspiracies that are very well documented, very easy to look up, get all the sources. And there's so much stinking noise that the mainstream can say, silly conspiracy theorists, ah, they just believe everything's a conspiracy. Everything isn't a conspiracy. Lots of things are. There are lots of things that nasty people have conspired to do to enrich and empower themselves at the expense of the prosperity and the safety and the freedom and the lives of decent human beings. That has happened forever, centuries and centuries. They're still doing it. But the thing that most gets in the way of the general public seeing that and learning that is the people who just randomly throw out all kinds of theories without any support, without any evidence. Again, even if they're true, if somebody makes a claim and no evidence and no reason for anybody to believe it, I don't just run out and go, hey, have you heard? So I'm like, well, I have no reason to think that's true. Maybe that guy has a reason to think it is, but he didn't give the reason to me. He didn't give me the evidence. So many people are doing this in the movement and proclaiming, oh, this was definitely a, a government-created hurricane. You don't know that. The vast majority of you do not at all know that. Even if it was true, you don't know that. You're repeating something because you heard it, because it was sensational, and people spread sensational things. They don't like spreading. They don't like spreading the gossip of, yeah, this is a sad storm. It's just that happened, these people are suffering, um, some people died, there was lots of devastation, it wasn't thousands of bodies in the street, it was just what it was. 
that gets less notice than what you'll see in the stupid stinking tabloids at the checkout at the supermarket. Because the people who write that shit know sensationalism gets attention. Facts don't. The freedom movement has yet to learn that. Do not repeat a claim if you have absolutely no reason to think that it's actually true. And most of you have absolutely no reason to think that most of what you repeat is actually true. There was actually an example. Um, I, think, I think the Clintons did this intentionally. If so, it was pretty clever. I have to give them credit. Bill and Hillary, they're evil psychopaths, but <laughs> they would make up conspiracies about themselves that were easy to refute. By the way, this, I don't have a copy here. This shows up in the Jones Plantation novel where some nasty thing about Mr. Jones comes out. Mr. Jones is all mad at Mr. Smith. You spread this lie about me. And he explains, yeah, explains, I spread a lie knowing that I could easily disprove it. And then you are the poor victim of these slanderous, hateful rumors. Hiller and I are so innocent, yet the people just hate us and they make up these rumors. No, you made up that rumor to distract from all the evil shit that you did do that is documented and all over the place to give the impression to the general public, oh, some people are just making up nasty rumors about the Clintons, which is a clever move, and it works because most people repeat shit when they don't understand anything about it. So, I guess I won't rant any longer. I'm not even saying government can't do that. Seems pretty stinking unlikely. Like, create a hurricane. Seems pretty unlikely to me. I'm not even ruling out the possibility. What I am saying is the vast majority of people out there completely sure that government did this have absolutely no reason to think that, except somebody else made the claim and it was sensational and it got their attention. And when they forward that claim and they repeat it, they get attention. They get rewarded for spreading something that they know nothing about. That is how you bury the truth, including the truth about conspiracies that really are easy to prove and, and document and all that. And so I know a bunch of people will be pissed off at me. So if you're going to be pissed off, here's what you do. In the comments below, give an actual explanation how the hell you think somebody can generate a hurricane with that much moisture in it. We're talking like billions of tons of moisture. You can't make it spontaneously appear. It comes from somewhere. H2O comes from somewhere. It doesn't magically appear in the clouds. So if somebody can actually attempt an explanation of how the hell the government would do that, cool, I'm all ears or eyes. I'll read it and see if you there's actually any foundation. I have yet to meet anything or see anything from any of the people spreading this that comes anywhere an explanation of how the hell they would do it. I hear lots of them mentioning, oh, they have a patent on weather control. Yeah, I've read it. It's boring and lame. It's throwing 50 pounds of dry ice into the heart of a hurricane to see if it does anything. And then that one moved and somebody said, there, we made it move. And one of the other people involved said, we didn't make that happen. Okay, that's not creating a hurricane out of nothing. <laughs> That's them trying to tinker with stuff. And anyway, you get the point. If you're pissed off at me and you can give evidence to actually back up the claim, do. Because if you have actual evidence, then I'll look at it. And if it's actual evidence, I'll go, oh, that's interesting. I haven't seen any yet. I've seen a huge number of people forwarding stuff because it's sensational and it gets attention and it's outrageous. Ah, oh, they might have done this horrible thing. They do plenty of horrible things. But the fact that they might have done this horrible thing, whoever they is and however they might have done it, that isn't a reason to spread it around until you find out, is that even possible? Again, they're absolutely evil enough to do just about anything they're not competent enough to do absolutely anything. They can do a bunch of sh stuff. They're constantly trying to find new ways to control and mess with everything in the world. Doesn't mean they can yet. This is government we're talking about. They're pretty incompetent in a whole bunch of things. 
So it's just, it's so frustrating to me. And like, I'm going to throw in one more mention of James Corbett. I am, I've never heard him talk about this. I imagine it would be frustrating. I mean, it's frustrating for me just watching it happen. But I imagine it's really damn frustrating for him to go to all the trouble of putting together all these sources, making 8 billion footnotes and the links of here's where you can look up every single step of my explanation and my establishing this conclusion. And to look out and see that there are people who have way bigger audiences who just make shit up. They don't even try to support it with anything. Sources say that blah, blah, blah. How is that any different from the mainstream going, experts say that blah, 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 we made some shit up, but you don't get any of the evidence which we pretend it's based on. Don't just be a competing set of baseless assertions. That's not an improvement. Trouble is, once again, actual understanding and knowledge takes time and effort and most people don't want to put in time and effort. They want the sensationalism. They want to believe things. They want to believe outlandish things. They want to repeat it and get attention because they're saying the most outlandish thing. And they don't realize a lot of them are making fools of themselves. Flat earthers, I'm talking to you. And a lot of them are actually making it harder for normal people to find the truth by burying it in a whole bunch of unsupported, just bullshit claims. So can you stop stinking doing that? The tax honesty movement is why the people don't actually know the genuine deception that was done by way of the income tax, which is massive. And I don't even talk about it anymore because I can't out shout all the bullshit noise that was based on nothing and that I can prove is bullshit and almost nobody wants to put in the time and effort to find out, to weed out the bullshit and find out the truth. And I don't really blame them as frustrating as that's been for me. Like I, I have the evidence. I have every single stinking citation, all the quotes, you can look it up and people don't care enough because it's under so much noise. They never hear about it. And that's the result of people who would appear to be my allies. We're against the IRS. Just like we're against the powers that be. And we're spreading so much bullshit that the actual documented, provable, evil, nasty conspiracies get buried in a bunch of confusing, contradictory bullshit. And then the people in power can go, oh, silly conspiracy theories. Those people probably think the earth is flat. And I see people who think they're on my side because they're pro-freedom helping make that possible.